And let me bring up the view here. So when we're working with organizational units, it's how we organize things in the database that um, is Active Directory. So we already talked about domains, so just a quick review of domains. So here's a domain. And as soon as you have a domain, you automatically have a tree. So that's a tree. And then within that, that the tree is within a forest. So I should probably label these. And a tree. And then a domain. So as soon as you have that, it's kind of all built. What's really nice about that, it's easy for expansion. I can add subdomains. I can add additional domains within the tree. And I can do additional trees. In fact, those were your um, options that you had when you installed a domain controller is where you want it to be. Do you want it to be in an existing domain? So if you already have one, uh, a new domain, and that new domain would be over here somewhere. Um, or a new tree, or if you really, really wanted to, you'd be completely separate and you could make a brand new forest off of there, so it's not related at all. But we're not going to do any of that. We're keeping it super simple. And we're, we're not that simple, that simple. So we're working on the domain itself. When you think of a domain, a domain is any collection of objects that are contained in that database, that special database that we've been working with. And what, what do we call that database again? Active Directory. Active Directory. And, and where do we put it? On your uh, do, uh, PC, domain controller. Domain controller. So it. every domain has to have a domain controller to store that database. So I always refer to it as a database. Um, but that's where you keep it. So any objects that are kept in there as part of the domain. If you want to be part of a different domain, you're going to be in a different database and you'll be listed there separately. So just remember that. Okay, so when we have things in a database though, we're talking mainly about computers and users and groups and things, the, the people usually that we think of, but also the computers and printers that we work with. Today we're going to start working with users, but before we can start working with users, you know, think of having a thousand files. What do you do with those files in your, in your file system? Do you have them all in your root drive? Yep. Some people do. <laughs> Some people do. So you have your resume and your budget and your last week's homework and all your pictures are all just all together. Probably not. Um, you probably do what? Subcategories. Subcategories. You put them in subfolders. You organize them. Why do you do that? Easier, 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 to find. Find. easier to find is probably the biggest thing. You kind of group things together because you're easier to find. Thinking the next step further, what else can you apply by different groupings of things? Security settings. Security settings. And that's kind of where we're going to play later on, and this will come into play. Unfortunately, it, it's, it's kind of a catch-22. We end up you know, talking about, oh yeah, before you start designing of how you're gonna sort this stuff, think about all these implications. And you're like, I don't know what those are. Um, so we're gonna talk about security, especially group policies. And you, you know, how do you apply group policies or, or delegation of permissions? You're like, what, I have to think about this? We're gonna think of it more for organizationally and then it's gonna sort of play in line with us um, for those other things later on. It just kind of works out. But you'll see how it could impact you later on when we work with group policies and with delegation of rights and permissions. We've got delegation of tasks. So we want to be able to organize these things. So if I have a company, what's a typical way I'm going to organize all these people in a company? How, what, how would I group them together? Maybe by height or birthday? Department. department. There you go. That's, that's another way, I suppose. Age. Um, age. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now we're going to do it by department. So let's take a look at an org chart first. Um, I should have given this to you before, but on the on the S drive on the on the network under students, you should see a class files folder. Under class files, you'll see a server administration class, and here's an org chart. It's Gopa org chart. Remember that gopa.com that we made, that company? This is the organizational structure for that company. Okay, 
So this is a typical organization structure. Um, if you know how to read an org chart, um, you'll have it sort of organizationally of who's your superior, who do you report to. Um, so we have workers down here, Jacob and Emily, report to Matthew. Matthew happens to be the Eastern um, sales manager. Uh, Matthew is a division manager who will report to the actual sales manager called Joshua. Joshua then reports to the president of the company, Madison. Um, Madison does have an assistant called Robert, has other subordinate, Madison has other subordinates, Joshua, Sarah, Andrew, Samantha, and Alexis, kind of each represent different departments. Um, we're going to completely ignore that, so just don't do anything with that at all. So any activity is just, it's just not there. That's for a, a later on, more advanced type thing, if we ever get there. But um, typically not. We're going to work with a very typical organization structure. So if I was going to organize these within a database, you know, um, how would I organize it? So I'd have the root... Just like you have the root of a directory, you have the root of your domain or your root of your tree. Now, what kinds of containers? Now, I don't have file folders under here. They're called containers, and technically, they're called organizational units. Now, containers, there's multiple different kinds of containers. One is an organizational unit. You'll hear me refer to it as an OU, an organizational unit or a container, but, but any of them are kind of the same thing. So what kind of containers might you have under there? Taking a look at the org chart. Sales. Sales. Okay. What else? General operations. Operations, or maybe ops. Regional managers. Um, is managers a department? No. No. It's a level of permission. It's a level, potentially, that might come in later on. So good oh, thinking right. ahead. Okay. No, excellent thinking ahead. Uh, right now, just kind of okay. just step back a, just one level. It's just like, what kind of departments? How would I organize this? Account. Sec accounting. Anything else? The nerds over in IT. IT? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Power. Anybody um, else? HR. HR. Okay. Anybody else? Customer service. President. Is that in our org chart? Oh, on ours. I ours, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So if we, if we had a customer service department, absolutely, we would have another container for them. Um, we, we could go on infinitely and, you know, research and development and, you know, whatever, um, transportation. So really, we could go anywhere. But to sort of keep it focused, that's what we came up with, the one org chart that we're going to stick with. So they were kind of going the same way. And by the way, the organization is completely arbitrary. You're going to say, my company doesn't organize that way. And that's very legitimate, but we would be like going in circles all day long of you know every different scenario. We have to have something to go towards. By the way, the IT department supports the organizational structure. It does not dictate the organizational structure. Um, the president and the board of directors and the managers, they say this is how we run. And then we say, great, we're here to support you. We don't go, we don't have the business degrees, at least most of us don't yet. Um, some of you may go on that way. You're not gonna go and say, well, you really should run your company this way because it's gonna make my tree easier. Um, no, no, it doesn't work out that way. So, anyway, so somebody else said like president, where's that going? Well, if, if you're an IT person, you put them on the bottom because people are gonna screw the most stuff up. Where? On the top? Bottom, top, middle, middle. <laughs> on the charts. Okay, so we could think of it one way. So I'm just going to go off the side here a little bit. So we could do, and I like calling them executive, um, as opposed to the president department, executive department, or executive area, or whatever. Do you do executive and then like sales and IT or whatever, or is it kind of all the same level? So, what is this like? Option A or B? I think a lot of it depends on two factors. A lot of it depends on multiple factors. What what things do you have come up with? One is again, how does the CEO? How does the board of directors? How does your company organize? Okay. And then the other part, up to whoever's making the domains and everything. 
it like okay. okay like the board of directors sets general guidelines mm-hmm. and then it's up to the IT person to interpret them and set it up so absolutely so they get the what they're Okay, go over to you, John. If you look at the chart, the normal employees are just one box. The, like the employees with a little more information have two boxes around them. Right? Yes. I'm assuming they're on the same level. Ooh. Could be, could be. Any other thoughts? Um, you really could do it either way. Um, there, there are advantages and disadvantages either way, and I'll just talk briefly about this. And this is not a, a again, you're not going to walk into a company and say, well, I'm class, this is how we did it, so therefore you have to do it this way. Mm-hmm. Not at all. It can be done either way. Um, I prefer option B just for ease of administration and for security and all that kind of stuff. When you think of, and we haven't gone to this, but file security, if you give access to a folder above, it flows down to everything. And at this point, if I did something, and equivalent things kind of happen at the organization unit level as well. There are no file rights. These are not files, these are not folders, these are organizational units and there are people. Um, But the same types of concepts can apply. When I apply group policies, and again, this is a foreign thing for the future, um, it applies to that container and all the containers underneath it. Also with rights delegation saying, I want Bob to administer the executive department and I want Sally and Jane to administer the rest of the network, but you know, maybe a special staff IT person for the executive area. And that's very, very common, by the way. This team is dedicated to that department, depending on, again, the politics of the organization or whatever. With this, I can do a group policy here, and it's special for the executives. I might want to make it more secure. I might want to make it more flexible. I might want to you know, allow things there that I don't allow other things. If I did that here, it's going to float on to everybody. And then I have to do all kinds of things to undo it, to redo it, and overlapping, and it just gets really confusing. Um, again, I like things really simple. Um, Also for rights delegation, like I said, if I have a certain team of people that's assigned to working with the executive, I can do it here. If I did it up here, it's then again going to flow on down and and sort of all over the place. Um, Also, in reality, the executive department is just another department. Um, They're going to have people in it. They're going to have requirements. They're going to have security needs and that kind of stuff. Yes, ultimately, you know, hierarchically, or organizationally, the salespeople report to the executive, but it, all it is is just a line. You know, you can still report to them without having you know organizational subunits and things underneath there. So, um, again, a complete arbitrary decision. We are going to use this method. This is okay, but we're just not going to do it in class, and we want to be consistent in class. And you could argue and justify why point A is better. We're just not going to do it in class because I'm going to be seeing stuff all over the place. John? Oh, I'm just kind of scratching my head. So logically, this is what it's going to look like, and now we're going to do it on the computer. So I'm going to show you first, and we'll talk about some of the things in the learning plan today, and then I'll give a chance for you to practice and then to actually implement. So what are you going to do first? Do and implement. And Watch and document. Yes. Okay. So, let me bring up my um, virtual machines. So, I don't need, oh, wrong screen, here we go. I don't need Windows 10, I don't need the home file open. Um, Because my machines are working together, DC1 and DC2, remember they're both domain controllers and the databases want to keep in sync, I do want to launch both of them. I often prefer to launch one and then launch the other. Um, There's a lot of activity that happens while you're launching a virtual machine, hard drive access. And yes, it's capable of handling both of them. On occasion though, one will get stuck or you could get a file messed up or something and um, you'll see it kind of trying to multitask and go between the two and it kind of just hangs both of them. It doesn't take that long to um, launch it. Once that one comes up, I'm going to open the other one. The other one should launch faster because it's a server core. 
I don't even need to log on to server uh, DC2. I'll just let that kind of run in the background while I work from the foreground on the DC1. Okay, I went to full screen doing control alt enter. Again, it's just less confusing. Log with my special password. And wait for server manager to launch. A tool that we use a lot, we'll be using a lot the next couple days, um, a couple weeks, I should say, in these next couple classes. Um, but that one of the more used <laughs> tools overall for network administration under tools is the one that deals with users and computers. Active Directory users and computers up in the menu on top. Okay, so what I'm going to use is um, Active Directory users and computers. When you launch it, it's going to look like a little telephone book on the bottom of the screen. Um, just kind of get used to that because it does get, you know, put in the background quite a bit or whatever. I always know that you have it open, you can switch to it. Um, these are different separate tools. You do not have to have Server Manager open or running to do it. Um, it's its own separate tool. We do use it a lot. So let's take a look at the organizational structure a little bit to begin with. So underneath GOPA, that's the root of your domain. That's the root of your tree. Um, so we have gopa.com. If I had subdomains, it would show underneath there, if possibly, or whatever. But we only work with one domain at a time. We also have, we have a bunch of these objects underneath here. And they look like the file folder things, but one of them is different than the rest. This one has a little icon inside of it. Um, that's actually an organizational unit icon. The rest of these are built-in containers. They're not organizational units. If I own Microsoft, I would put them in a different place. Um, so right now, we're going to have these all intermixed between built-in containers and organizational units. Well, what's the difference? Okay, multiple things. One thing is built-in containers are built when the server is built. So when you install Windows, all of these get created. Um, the second thing is um, most of them you can't delete or rename or do anything with. So here's one called Users. Inside users, here's all the people that create it automatically during the install. If I right-click on it, there's no delete. There's also no rename on there. If I look up to this one, now this is an actual true, live, real organizational unit. I can right-click on it, and I would be able to delete it. Um, well, actually, that one I can't rename. Hmm, that's interesting. We're going to look at other ones that we can. In fact, that's part of our activities. So we can take a look at organization units, but they all get mixed up in here. They're going to look very, very, very similar. One's going to have the icon in and one's not. A bigger difference for us is remember we keep talking about, you're like, I'm so sick of talking about group policies. Um, group policies cannot be applied to built-in containers. Isn't built-in container, like group policies, all the things we do to control users and computers and that kind of stuff? So does it seem a little counterintuitive to have a container called computers that you can't apply a group policy to? Um, yeah, and here's another one called users that you also cannot apply group policy objects to. Um, I'm just gonna show you what our classroom one looks like. And so in many cases, and like we do in the classroom, just like we would um, in, in real life in other situations, is we work around that by making up another other containers, like here we call one students. So since we can't really do anything with users, we make one called students. Um, since we can't do group policies based on computers, we make one called workstations. Um, and now with workstations, being an organizational unit, you can see a little icon on there, um, that means that it could be a, um, group policies could be applied to it. Um, I'm just going to show, that it's, it's jumping way ahead. I'm just going to show a little bit about that, though. I'll show you what the group policies of how they get connected. So here is, that's, if you notice, the only things that show up in this list for group policies are organizational units. Users doesn't show up on here. Computers doesn't show up on here. So only organizational units do. So if I want something special applied to the computers under workstations in L119, this is where I apply this group policy. And this one specifically says the people 
on these computers, no matter who logs in, is going to print to that printer in the back of the classroom. That's all that's saying. For all the workstations, they're going to have these different policies applied to it, but that's a whole separate subject at a later date. But again, you're only going to see organizational units here, not built-in containers. Um, also with rights delegation, when we talk about who can do what, um, I will allow you to manage and be the administrator for this department. You can't apply delegate rights delegation to um, built-in containers. You can only do it to organizational units. So there's some limitations, but it's still, it's what we have to work with. So I'm back to DC1. And you can see I don't have any, um, I just have domain controllers as my organizational units. But I want to make the rest of the ones like I drew on the board. To make an organizational unit, to create an organizational unit, you have, Microsoft loves giving you options. Um, you know, I can do it all kinds of different ways. I can write, I can click on GOPA and then right click on GOPA.com and go to new. Um, and I choose organizational unit. Another way is find an open space after you select your, your um, container that you want to put it in, and I can right click and go to new organizational unit. You also have these little icons up on top, and it um, depends what you like. If you like icons, these are great, but here's a little folder with the icon on it with a little sun next to it. Anytime you have a little sun next to something, that means new, and so I can click on new organizational units. You can also go up to the actions menu bar and also go to new organizational unit. Um, so <laughs> if, if you're saying, oh, I can't find a way to create an organizational unit, you're just not looking because it's if you right click or click on anything, it's going to be a menu option to create a new organizational unit. So we're going to create one and I'll just start with executive. I'll create executive. When I create one, and then I go up to action and make a new one again, um, if you notice though, it's gonna create it in the executive container. So whatever one you created, it's gonna make the new one underneath it. It kind of like highlights where you created. And this happens all the time, and people end up putting in the wrong spot. Now this was debatable whether stuff goes in our executive or not. We decided not to, but it's super easy to like, okay, I just click okay. Oh, that's the wrong spot. And I still do it too, because I wish it just like kept where you were and I could just keep adding things. Every time you create a new organizational unit, um, it, it goes to that organizational unit and then it just kind of goes from there. So what do you do then if you made a mistake? Well, we could just delete it. So we just highlight it and we hit the delete key. And no, oh, I just delete that. No, you don't want to do that. Let's see here. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yep. And it says you don't have sufficient privileges. I'm the network administrator, though. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, let's take a look at this a little bit closer. What if I create the new organizational unit? What does this say? Protect the container from accidental deletion. Okay, if you delete an organizational unit, it deletes everything in that organizational unit. So with a right-click delete, you can wipe out the entire sales department. Um, all the users, um, and not the files, this is just the, the users. And by the way, there's no recycle bin. Um, Active Directory is like the registry. Um, going in and deleting a key or a whole tree in the registry, it's gone. Same thing here, you delete an organizational unit, it's gone. Uh, later, okay, you're gonna say, no, oh, I know there's, a yes, technically there's a recycle bin, it's actually an advanced server feature, and we don't get to it in this class at all. Um, so in your mind, there's no recycle bin. If you delete it, it's gone. So anyway, this is what happens, protect the container from accidental deletion. It's like, okay, well, let's unprotect this thing. So how would you unprotect this thing? Well, I take a look, go to properties. Yeah, it's like, oh, hang on a second. Wait, wait, okay, don't mind this. Here we go, okay. So, okay, so I right click on here, I go to properties, and it's just like, okay, where do I like, where do I change that? I don't see it, I can't see it. So what do I do? 
I go under view and I want to view advanced features. So without doing that, if I just look under, let me just open up, actually I was working with IT, not executive. If I want to look at IT, I have three tabs going across here. Um, if I go to view advanced features and then I go back under IT and I put what are properties, I'm going to see that I have six tabs now. And yes, this is how you end up finding it. So um, if I go ahead and look at Managed by object, security, com, attributes. Under object is where you're going to find the protect object from accidental deletion. So I can go ahead and just uncheck that, click OK, go back over to IT, and then hit delete, and then I can delete it. So if somebody says, oh yeah, I accidentally deleted sales, I'm not sure how you would accidentally deleted it because you can't even find the un, uh, not protect this from accidental deletion without having to do multiple extra steps. So, going back to executive again and say I accidentally deleted, I, I create another organizational unit in here. And let's call it IT again. Um, another thing we could possibly do is just move it. Moving also has lots of different options. I can go to Actions, and I can go to Move. And when we go to Move, it just says, okay, where do you want to put it? I can right-click on it and say Move. I can drag and drop, and that also moves. Um, so lots of different ways of moving different objects. If I click Yes, it says you don't have access to do that. Why wouldn't I have access to move it? Protected. It's protected. So, yes. Um, by the way, once you turn on View, Advanced Features, it stays on forever. Even if you close out the tool and bring the tool back open, um, it, it does stay, save it. That's why you saw it there to begin with, is because I left it there from before by mistake. <laughs> anyway, um, but yes, I go to Properties, and then I go to Object. But it says Protect from Accidental Deletion. Again, not worded very well. If I ran Microsoft, <laughs> um, I would rename this to protect from accidental deletion or moving. Um, it doesn't say that. So protect from, accidents. from accidents, yeah, protect from accidents. So now, now that it's not protected anymore, now I can you know right click and say move to, and I wanna put it right in the root, and now I'm able to move, move it. So now you can see that it's equal with executive. At this point, though, IT is unprotected. Somebody could come along here accidentally and go delete, and there goes your IT department. Um, so we want to make sure that if you move an object, that you go back to object and then protect it again um, to make sure that it is protected so that you don't accidentally delete it. So yes, I want to delete it. No, nope, you can't do it. Here. Okay, um, other things that we can do. Oh, so IT is protected again. Um, I can rename objects, so I can just click rename or else, you know, having multiple options. It's just the double, it's just the single click twice. Not a double click, a single click twice. We'll also bring this up. So if you want to rename it IS instead of IT, um, you can rename it without having that protection thing um, removed. So what I want to have you do now then is on the learning plan, it's going to have you um, just play with some organizational units. Um, this is one of those things that once you kind of create them, they're there, and we really don't go back to them for the rest of the semester. And so trying to give you a little bit more opportunities of playing with them, you know, in the activities here. So you're going to create two organizational units under um, GOPA, one called animals and one called trees. Under animals, you're going to create sub OUs called dogs, cats, and apple. <laughs> Under trees, you're going to create one called pear, cherry, and horses. Okay, and then you're going to move the apple. Under trees, you can move horse under animals. You're going to rename dogs to canines, rename cats to felines, and then you're going to delete the entire tree OU. Not the animals one. We need the at one back. Um, keep the animals. We had people delete these and they had to recreate them. 
Um, so just do those. Don't do anything beyond that. So just work on those activities.